Okay, we're going to start in about 22 seconds. How you guys doing? Welcome to Probate Weekly. We get together every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, and all the times in between and after. We also live stream this onto YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I just want to thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, and by the way, we're watching this live. Uh, if you're on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn live, feel free to put comments in. I'll pick them up along the way. And... Um, here is a comment. Oops, we've got a little technical issue. Let's get that removed. That's fine. Matthew Price, David, a good point of calling folks before the update to the DNC with a TCPA. Now you have to have a lead and they're going to opt in. How do you handle that? Let's talk about that in just a second. But uh, I want you to participate live. If you're there, ask questions. Uh, say hi. Put your contact info in. Let's network. Let's get business together. Uh, I am all about business. I am not selling coaching, data, or any program. I'm a real estate practitioner based in LA. I have a team across the country of real estate professionals are building my business and like to do it with you and help you. And as I say all the time, if just us on the call got all the probate business in America, we'd all make a fortune. So let's work together and build our business. Um, so Matthew Price, uh, we'll just take a couple questions here before we get started. Matthew had a great question about the DNC do not call list. And I want to share kind of an interesting conversation that I had on that subject. Um, uh, oops, I'm going to take it off. Uh, earlier this week, um, I actually had have been a um, um, administrator for a probate. One of the legal services I use said, hey, you know, the customer really can't do the paperwork. And in California, you can file on behalf, act as a fiduciary on behalf of the customer. You can do it once, you'll need a license, twice, you'll need a license, three times, you need a license in California. Some states, most states don't require licenses. So um, I did it. And it's interesting, I got ma uh, mail and I'm putting together kind of a presentation on what that looked like, phone calls, texts. So I, I uh, you know, personally don't like getting to uh, uh, robocalls. And I was just curious, and I happened to see a, uh, an attorney who advertises that he sues for the do not call list. And so I called him up and talked to him a little bit. He's a national uh, attorney, well-known. One of the things he said to me was pretty much they can only sue uh, if it's their mobile phone or personal phone. And also if the, if the customer says, don't call me again, and they call back again. Now that's why it's so important to clean up your database when you call somebody and they say, put me do not call list, you need to put them on. But he was indicating to me, and I'm not in favor of therefore cold calling. I'm just saying, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not in favor of cold calling the do not call list numbers. I'm just saying it was an interesting position as attorney that that law is only enforceable if you call somebody after they say stop and only if you're calling their personal uh, mobile phone, not their landline. I found that fascinating for what that's worth from an attorney whose business is suing violators of that business. Um, okay, so so Dave's question is, uh, um, I'm sorry, Matthew's point was that Dave Pinot had a good point about making those calls now before the laws change. I don't know. I, I would do it anyhow, but you know, I'm going to step out of that conversation. Talk to your broker if you work for a company. Make sure you follow the law in your state as well as your broker's policies. Matthew Price also says, I close on a probate tomorrow. Woohoo! Uh, Matthew, great. I have a listing presentation tomorrow online. I'm excited about so uh, we're doing good. Angela McLeod, welcome from Los Angeles, California. I don't think we've met before, Angela, but thank you for coming in and sharing your contact info. And for anybody who's doing that, feel free to put your phone number, your, your email address. Let's make sure we network and do business together if at all possible. I have a guest. I'm not sure where he is. Uh, he was in the promo, but, uh, you know, we all have our issues. And I texted him again the link. So maybe it's a technical issue. Uh, so what I do always is I have a backup plan. Uh, just because that's the kind of guy I am. And what would I talk about? Hopefully that will be of value to you and might have been a topic that I would have talked about had I planned ahead. So one of the topics that I get asked about regularly is building a YouTube channel. I'll share with you a statistic. Um, I actually got a list of the top real estate agent YouTube channels. Now, top 
recommended by a great source. Um, and um, it was interesting when I looked at them and how many subscribers they have and how many views they have. Uh, one of the top was Ryan Serhant. Tom Ferry is another one uh, that I've chased and seen for a long time and watched my numbers. But I want to share with you guys, thanks to your support, those of you who watch YouTube Live as well as those of you who uh, watch the YouTube in particular on recording, that we had more views in the last 30 days than the next two competitors, which are probate coaching companies combined. And so thank you for your support. I hope it's because we're putting out content that's of interest to you and more importantly, helping you with your business. Because I'm not doing this to sell coaching. I don't really have it. But I really sing a program. I have a small email program. That's more for people I'm trying to help. Uh, let's see. Rochelle Ernest from Better Homes and Gardens in, uh, I'm not sure what state, from Augusta, Georgia. Well, welcome, uh, Rochelle. And uh, hey, Sensei Bill Gross. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the love. Okay. So what I thought I would do today is talk about building or using YouTube to build your probate business. So really building a YouTube channel to build your probate business. Now you might say, well, Bill, aren't you then uh, um, you know, creating your competition or training competition? The answer is, first off, it's hard work. If you're willing to work harder than me, good luck. And two, um, I think your best success will be at least starting in your local market where you can corner the market with good information. I'm in Los Angeles. It's a big market here in LA. There's a lot of other competitors here. But in, in your market locally, uh, if you're going to the court, you can become the expert. Courtney Rollins, I believe, has built a whole business by being the expert in his market, which I think is in uh, one of the counties in Virginia. So we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube. Um, my coach, Grant Cardone, Uncle G, those of you who recognize it, see the 10 type, 10 X uh, flag there behind. I've read his book. I've been to his seminars. Fantastic. I met him when he was expired listing here in L.A. He said, even if your service is by far, or your product is by far the best, and if you give it away for free, now I'm not listing houses for free. I'd like to think I'm the best probate real estate agent, but hard to distinguish. But even if I was clearly the best, and if I did it for free, he says, it's 10 times harder to sell than you would ever imagine. Now just let that think in for a second even if it's the best service by far, we all want to say we're the best agent. And even if it was for free, um, it's 10 times harder than you would ever would imagine. Now, for some of you, for those of you watching live on the YouTube or Facebook, put in the chat box, what's your reaction to that? It's going to be 10 times harder than you imagine. Is that good news? Is that bad news? We're not in Zoom as well. We're only on YouTube Live. We moved off of Zoom because we get better video here. We don't get the watermark on the YouTube. We had more people watching after than live. So Peter asked the question, are we on Zoom as well? And the answer is no, we've moved off of Zoom and we're only on YouTube. So again, how does that make you feel when I say to you, it's 10 times harder than you would imagine? Right when I when I was a manager at Century Twenty One, and the owner kind of recruited me in to be the recruiter, and we went through some numbers of what I'd have to do to recruit a certain amount of people to make the money I wanted to. And after I worked there, uh, thirty days, two things were true. I found out one, nobody was making anywhere near the money that he had said we would for that work. And number two, it really would take I think it was ten to twenty times the number of contacts to achieve the goals I had set out than I had planned on. Now, at that point, I was already working there. Like, what are you going to do? And I just said, well, how do I figure it out? And I really sat down. And for those of you who know me back when I was the um, coach and later executive vice president at Century 21 Masters, I came up with a plan to build a phone calling event. He had kind of had it, but I really made it much bigger. I said, well, what do I have to do to get 10 times the people on the phone and get them to show up in the office? And we built uh, the phone blitz in, uh, the, in the Walnut area, in an Irvine, in Embraer. And that was a result of 10 times thinking. I didn't know it at the time. Now, I think the common thread of successful people is they're willing to pay the price other people won't. They're willing to pay the price other people won't. It's just, it's hard to have great success financially and personally. I make really good money. I've got money in the bank. I'm 
I'm trying to wire transfer money and my daily limit in as much as I have to wire out. Like that's a good, that's a good problem to have. Um, you know, I, I work 35 hours a week. I don't work 40, 50 or 60 anymore, but I've worked hard to earn that. And I think when I listen to people like Elon Musk is a perfect example, like him or not, he's obviously successful financially. The thing he talks about is how hard it has been to build the car company and the space company. When you listen to him talk about it, you feel the emotion. If you want to be a real estate professional, I believe you've got to be, confront the reality. It's going to be hard. Now, it's not as hard as, you know, mining coal in a coal mine in the 1920s. It's not as hard as, I don't know, uh, running from lions while trying to find something to eat in the uh, jungle. But it's going to be hard emotions. There's going to be setbacks. It's going to push you. It's going to force you to be a bigger person. And I believe that's the point, is to force you to be a bigger person so that when you have the success, you're more able to do use those resources properly. I just believe that's how the game was created. That's how the game was set up. Next game was spiritual, but the reality is it's hard work. You have to be prepared for it. So what are we going to do? And I, I see a, a guest, so I'm going to kind of wrap up. I'm going to give another quick five minutes. One of the advantages of YouTube is you obviously talk to a lot of people at once. When I was recruiting real estate agents for my main business, I'd have 40 contacts a day. Many of you come through systems like Mike Ferry, and you have to contact 40 people a day. And I think that's great, but I can tell you, I had 9,000 views on my YouTube channel last month, the last 28 days. And even if a view on YouTube is as much as a contact on the phone, I don't think it is. Maybe it's worth one-tenth. That's the equivalent of 900 contacts in 28 days. And those average views, on average time on, in my case, is about five minutes. That's longer than contacts on the phone typically. So I don't know where the metrics are. You, you need to find your own. I found my own metrics. And I generally try to shoot for a 10 times multiplier. For each hour spent on video, I want 10 times view time uh, to be worth my time. That's kind of the metric that I use as I build my channel out. And I worked with a coach, Casey Eberhardt, Networking Riches, and put together the plan of the video. And I'm just going to share with you uh, real quick um, some quick overviews of what we did. But I want to say that what got me started was a challenge on a networking call. He challenged us, those of us who said we wanted to build a channel, to put up a video of something, one a day, every day for 30 days. I remember I went to Grant Cardone's event in Florida a couple of years, three years ago, and I had been doing a video a week, and I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. And Grant said, well, whatever you're doing, do 10 times more. And I thought, how do I do 10 videos a week? And today, I'm sure I do, I do way more than that. If you add the pieces and the shorts and the this and the that and the Facebook and the LinkedIn. So it's a numbers game. You got to find a process to do it. And, but you attract your contacts. You attract the views. You attract how many people see it. And so I'm going to share with you um, the power uh, of one to many with video. There's really four main things to think about when you're building a YouTube channel. One is it's lead generation, right? You're talking to people that otherwise you're not going to see. I have people call me all the time who saw my YouTube. They're already somewhat interested in talking to me, and they already get that I know what I'm talking about in some, some area at least because of the YouTube. Very powerful. Number two, it demonstrates your expertise to your current database. And this is overlooked by most people. One of the main reasons you send this out, one of the main reasons you post the content, is for the people who already know, like, and trust you. Because they maybe know that you're a nice person. They don't know that you are an expert in something, probate real estate, estate planning, avoiding probate, whatever. You have a chance to share your expertise. It's kind of like auditioning for the job before you have the opportunity for the job. Number three is the ultimate lead follow-up tool. Whenever I, I get a lead or set an appointment, I always, hey, by the way, here's my YouTube channel where I talk about probate. Hope you find it interesting. I've had sellers call, I've literally had sellers call me or I call them and they'll say, yeah, we're interviewing you know, six realtors. We'd love to work you in on Wednesday. And I've said, thank you. If you have five others, sounds like you're taken care of. You don't need me. If I can help, I have a link to my, U, my probate channel. If you have a question, feel free to call me anytime. I've had two call me back and say, you know, 
I saw your channel. I get it. You're an expert. We want you to list the house. It's the ultimately follow up. And you don't need thousands of subscribers. You, get, you only need the video and the link to it to send your customer. The fact is on YouTube, it's kind of like it's on TV. And the last is it's a referral power tool that you send the interview when you want your customers to work with your lender, your insurance, your attorney. If you've interviewed that person ahead of time, you say, oh, by the way, Joe's a great mortgage agent, and here's an interview I did with him. And it, and it just makes it easier to tie the customer to the person you want to do with, you want to work, do business with. So what I would challenge anybody who wants to build a YouTube channel, if you have a Google account, you have a YouTube channel already, it's already established, and we all have phones, right? And if you just go to YouTube, on the bottom, there's a little plus sign. All you gotta do is hit it. It'll ask you something about your, your photos and hit the record button. And uh, I think by default, it looks back at you. You got one and upload it. And just talk. If you're not comfortable, you'll get comfortable. Do it once a day for 30 days. By the end of 30 days, you'll be better. Every expert I've seen on YouTube channels has said the same thing. Just do 100 and then start improving from there. Do 100 and then start uh, start improving from there. Okay. Um, let's see. Matthew, suspicious of free. Oh, a hook. Okay. Uh, Delissa was depressed. I'm so sorry, Delissa. Don't mean to make you depressed. I do mean to challenge you. It's going to be hard work. I want to help you. I want to be next to you while you do the hard work, Delissa, and I want to hold your hand through it if I can. Um, and Tobias says, my, my podcast helped you. That's great. Glad to help if I can anyway. Hey, I'm really excited today to introduce a colleague and a friend and a, I don't know what else, uh, uh, just a good guy, smart guy, guy I pay attention to, expert in real estate, expert in building a successful real estate business, also expert in probate real estate, Dave Pinnell from the great state of Texas. David, what's up? Hey, thanks for having me on. If I remember, are you from Fort Worth area? Yes, Fort Worth. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where are you, where are you talking Everybody about? Everybody Fort thinks Worth. I live in, you know, you say Texas, they say Dallas or Austin or Houston. It's we're we're left out right an hour from Dallas. So But you have the classic Fort Worth accent. Like I can tell right away here for you, you're from yeah. Fort Worth. That's cool. very good. How long have you been in real estate? Oh gosh. Officially since I was twenty nine years old. So I'm forty six now. So seventeen years? Yeah. And did you start as an agent or investor, wholesaler? How'd you start the business? I started when I was 21 buying houses and, and remodeling, not making a dime on remodels. Probably my first house, I remember making 2,500 bucks after doing all the work myself. But I learned a lot and I, I was headstrong that I could do better than any, any contractor in the very, very beginning. So now it's all about hiring people so I don't have to waste my time or use my time in that aspect of the project. So you started as an investor and remodeler. When did you start becoming a real estate agent? Uh, around the age of 28 10 years old. So it was year about seven later. years of buying. I only bought four houses in seven years. Played around with it, read some books. Um, was still trying to get into law enforcement. Still, still trying to take a career when I got my degree in uh, criminal justice. Um, and it... In, until the job applications weren't just being accepted, it seemed like nobody wanted to hire me. That I got into sales one weekend. My brother told me to go show some houses, and you don't technically have to be a licensed a, uh, agent to show new construction. Technically, I guess, um, but that's what he told me at least. Uh, so. You know, you, you get into it and then you figure out you can make some money at it. And I never wanted to be a realtor. I never wanted to be a broker. Uh, but it just, it, it, it grew. It grew over 17 years. Now we sell 80, 90 homes a year and it's, it's just a small shop, you know. It's Fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. And what percentage of business today is real estate agent sales versus investors, fix and flips and, and buying properties as investor? It's definitely 75, 25. 75 realtor or 75 investor 75 investor 75 percent of yeah we'll do we'll do close to 40 or 50 probate deals or um you know deal machine stuff or cat you know driving for dollars that we find 
on a when I go on a probate appointments or whatnot. It's it's really a unique skill after you do this so long. And I know you interviewed a lot of a lot of people, but you know when when you have a it's such an advantage when you know how to work just as well as what your title company is going to do for you. And you could get all that information up front or figure out the loopholes that you have to jump through to get that title clear. And probate's taught me that going through every situation in probate uh, is just that experience level is just, uh, we've done close to uh, 211 probate deals that were in probate. That's, that's nuts. I never thought that would happen. It was so hard to get our first probate deal or no, I mean, the best investment houses that I ran into were always probate. They're always the best margins on the, the flip, the remodel, whatnot. Uh, for you know whatever reason, the family didn't have an emotional attachment to the property so they could sell it for cheaper uh, based on the condition. But so you, you run into a few of those as a realtor and you're like, oh, I'll just list these for a four or five five thousand dollar commission check. And then you start buying them and you're like, oh, gosh, I can make this out of it. It's great. It's it's amazing. So yeah, it's you funny. Start more, they start learning more probate, I guess. Well, you know, it's funny you say that about the investment because I've, I've heard you say this over and over again. And, and I've, I've been a little lazy as an investor. And just recently, about a month ago, I had a guy call me up and say, I have a problem, blah, blah, blah. And the buyer backed out. And I said, well, how much is the, you know, what was the price again? He told me and I knew the area. I yeah. said, well, I'll just buy it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just buy it's it. Awesome. You know, and he goes, really? I said, yeah, I got my the bank and I can afford it and I'll fix it up and do something. I'll figure it out. And uh, they want some money right away. And I said, yeah, I can write your check today. It's not a problem. So I think I think that all of us who are in real estate now, it, this is not a lead where I approach the seller as a realtor. I think the only issue I have is you can't approach as a realtor and then be the principal and argue against them on the value. That's hard. In this case, it was an agent who brought it to me, not at, at, to list the property, but just talking about it, complaining about it. And, and uh, uh, so I had no relation with the seller at all uh, mm -hmm. other than he's and now I'm the buyer and he's the seller. So it worked out really well. Um, okay. So let's talk about you started uh, from being investor to being an agent in probate real estate. What were the steps that you started? Uh, what got you started in, listing property as a real estate agent and probate specifically and or what would you do today to accelerate that process? Well, it's, you know, we're going through a time that it's everybody's calling the probate people now. You know, we're getting, we get, you get wholesale people, you get people from YouTube that take a weekend class that call the PRs now. You got, um, we're, we're not seeing a whole, you know, I love making the calls and reaching out to people, but people are just simply annoyed. You know, maybe they're not getting a call on their probate anymore. They, they probably are, but they're getting calls from people with all these Medicaid calls, all these other spam calls, these death benefits, these, and, you know, it's, what I, I guess what I'm saying is that I, I probably would not go after the PRs as much the personal representatives in probate, I would start immediately going after anybody that was uh, in in the process, so the title companies or attorneys or estate planning people. Uh, we, we're we're going to sponsor one of the associations as a realtor to be in front of more attorneys that have the better leads. You know, we're trying to get away from, and I, I would never said I was going to do this. I never thought I'd go after attorneys as heavily as we are now. Uh, and I'll give you an update next year how it's going. But right now, I, we're sending out our, our – we've sent out mail every quarter to attorneys. So they know my – they got my letter. They got my business card. They knew who I am. This month, we're sending out a, a – the mailers cost me $14 for the mailer. And I don't know if I could bring it up on – but it's a it's a letter uh, of endearment to the attorney that I'll take care of the relationship and the uh, uh, their their reputation. I will treat everybody honorably, and I'll I'll either list the house or I'll make advice on how to make repairs, and I tell them what my experience level is. But I also sent them a I got this from one of my my coaching members a tape measure that says I'll measure up, <laughs> and then I'm sending. Um, 
a, you know, a postcard that we send for I'll sell your house in 29 days. It's a full package of stuff that cost me about $13 per mailer, including well, the stamp and the letter and the paper. And we're still, doing that. We're doing that to a thousand attorneys in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Woo. Yeah. So that's thirteen thousand dollars in just one mailer that we're doing it to. That's nuts, huh? Well, I, I don't know if it's nuts. I think I would say that um, you know the opportunity of those of us who are working hard and have been successful. This is the opportunity to really make progress over the competition. And if you're if you're focused where the money goes, I I wouldn't just buy a bunch of Zillow leads today. Mm -hmm. um, but you know I've started doing postcards to attorneys now. I only send postcards to attorneys that I've already talked to on a deal or met on a deal. So I have about 250 that I've you know done something with sometime in my career, and I try to call them every 90 days. Um, nice. Don't get to all of them anymore. I'm just not that active on the phone. But I there was a time I was up until maybe last year. And so, and, and so, you know, I mail them postcards and I never really did that before, but you know, I make a good money. I can afford to reinvest in the business and let the money do a little bit of the work rather than me have to, you know, grind it out all myself. And so that's, that's right. kind of part of it. I, I know my competition sponsors, you know, mixers for the associations and things like that. And, and those are great. I don't know what their return for the investment is. I think that it's a lot of time. You got to go to those events. You got to pay for the events. They're not cheap uh, if you're the sponsor. So, but you got to do something, but the key is to watch your return for investment. I know you've talked about that in the past, as far as your mailers, yeah. that it, there's a, there's a math equation that you're following and it either works for you and it doesn't. And if it does, you do more. And if it doesn't, you don't, uh, don't do it. Talk a little bit about that. How would you make, you know, I don't know that that decision is relevant to too many people on the call other than you, or maybe me, but in general on decisions to make direct mail, and I get asked this by agents all the time and I don't yeah. really do it. How do you decide in the past what's worked for you? How do you decide when to send direct mailers either to petitioners and or attorneys? Well, the first mailers we ever sent, um, I never really followed the plan of mailing somebody. Uh, we always sent mail, but the first people we sent mail to the ones that we connected with on the phone. And I had a bunch of callers, ISAs, inside cell agents, or, or agents too, calling them. So if we connected and we had them in a follow-up program, we'd call them. We'd send them a letter too. And we keep them on like a maybe five letters. Um, if I had no if I had no money and I was broke and I and I was starting probate or I was a, a, as I, if I wanted a, a, a source, uh, I hate to say if you're a new agent to do probate because once you get a deal you have to know how to work through. You need to partner up with somebody the first couple and figure out, or you mm -hmm. need to read. You need to there's like 22 books on Amazon that you could read about process of probate and what it does and what a family goes through i think someone really needs to do that and get off of youtube read that content um so if you're if if you're a new agent or you're expanding into probate and you have idea you have a idea of the closing process for a buyer and seller it's very similar but the title company is going to have so many roadblocks of when that title or that schedule b or c comes back or at least in Texas, we have a schedule A, B, C, and C gives them instructions how to clear the title. And and if it's an attorney state, if you're in an attorney state, they're going to clear that title. And if you could help them with it, that's even. Uh, and we we run down everything we need to do. We I drove up to uh, two hours from here, stayed in a hotel for two days to track down a doctor that didn't sign uh, his name correctly on a a deed of trust or it wasn't dated or something, right. but he's the one that sold it to the family and the title company wasn't going to provide a title policy, a clear title. Cause the guy didn't really sign out and he didn't divest from the property correctly over 10 years ago. And I had to find the guy, introduce myself in a two day period and get a doctor analytical type mind person to sign something that he, you know, they screwed up 10 years ago. So things like that, you got, on the, but those deals, that was a forty thousand dollar wholesale fee. That's crazy. You know, it's like it's worth those two days. Well, because nobody else is willing to do that. Number one, it's worth forty thousand dollars. You're getting paid for the time. Number two, nowadays you probably have to do that type of work less with technology. It's easier to find people. You, yep. you know, you can Federal Express some documents. You can find somebody local to send it to Federal Express. Uh, I know for me, I used to go to court all the time to pick up documents. Now there's a, a legal service I use that 
does that yeah. for me and delivers them to me. So technology has really extended. If you know the business, the technology is kind of like your arms and legs. You can have eight or 10 arms working at once rather than just one or two. So, so it sounds like really just the hustle muscle is something to develop. And some you make money on, some you don't, some you make a lot of money on, and it's a numbers game. Yeah, some you you lose, talk to, yeah. like I do, a lot of brand new agents who are experienced who are looking to jump into probate. What would you recommend them to do or what would you tell them to avoid doing uh, to build their business in probate? If they're already an established agent, they're struggling a little bit, but they want to do more business, what would you recommend to them? Just read the books, understand the process of probate and what, what the probate process is in your state. Yeah. Why why does a family have to go through it? You know, somebody can, can I stop right there for those watching? Stop right there. For those watching, do you see how a matter of fact he is on that answer? Do you see? I asked the question. He's almost like assuming I should know the answer, and he's, he's right. It's obvious the answer, if you're experienced, you should know the business. So many yeah. of us and you want to – learn the magic marketing technique. And I just asked yeah. David for the second time, and his answer was, know the process so you can be a service customer. I'm sorry to interrupt, David, but I just uh, thought it was so telling. Just an example. I got a call at 3.30 today, and the guy said, I've talked to several realtors, and they just don't want to – they don't get back to me. They don't get back to me. And the guy goes to foreclose. It's Tuesday. His brother passed away, owing 118 on a house. The house is worth three fifty, and you know, in in less than five days, I'm going to try to get a, an investor to pay that, replace the mortgage. So I'm going to go and just replace the lien on the property. Maybe if the, if there's no other liens or title issues, we're going to run a title search in the next three business days: Friday, Tuesday, Monday, and Tuesday by ten a.m. Uh, the courts here when they foreclose on the property. I have. I have two and a half days to figure out how to replace his mortgage. If I do that, I'm at risk because he doesn't actually own the house. The deceased brother owns the house and the sister and the and and his um there's a granddaughter that he adopted, so that's gonna be another that's you know <laughs> it's it, when someone calls off your letters or you make phone calls to probate, you have to be ready with that knowledge. And that does come with experience. 70% of that knowledge comes with other transactions. And I didn't know that in 2014 when I started probate. A lot of these probate deals just fell in my lap because I was heavily on listing side. I, I got coached early on in my career to leave buyers alone. So I've never bought a buyer lead. I've done SEO to attract buyers from my listings. But I've probably, out of 1,400 sales, I've... I was buyer heavy the first three years as an agent because it was new home construction, 07, 08, 09, and it died out. I figured out how to get foreclosures and short sales. I became a, a full-time listing agent. And then that and that, that just created opportunities to find – or the, the probate houses just came up. They they just – you just start hearing about them or you run into one, and you got to figure out how to close it. And I leaned heavy on my title company at the time to do that. And I – then I leaned heavy on like a traditional title company, one that doesn't really do investor stuff. So they got lost in the mess too. They they just waited for someone to do their job for them, or they they did their title work, but they didn't know how to do the the stuff with the probate. Right. It took four months to close some of these probate houses, or longer, or longer. And I've, I got some longer. Look, or longer. I, you know, I'll tell you, I have a list appointment tomorrow where I've already prepackaged to the customer their estate. So in California, they'd have to get bonded. They'd be uh, need court approval. We're going to use a professional fiduciary to step in for them. They need an attorney to file the paper, can handle the probate. They need to borrow some money to bring the loan cl clear, pay, advance some of the expenses. Yeah. Um, so I'm bringing three or four parties. And oh, an eviction. There's a there's a family <laughs> member who's not an heir. They need to get noticed. And so I have an eviction attorney. So I'm putting together four pieces of a puzzle. Uh, but it's all packaged. Like if you say yes, here's the four steps. I'll man. I'll, I'm the I'm the uh, conductor of the orchestra. You do this. Yep. You file the probate. You get the eviction notice. You get the advances. But that's what these deals look like, right? They're more complicated. But there's also less competition if you know what you're doing. So that's so um, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, phone call. One of the things I get, and I'm sure you hear this also, one of the uh, agents on the call today is saying uh, that when I call, people say they're getting so many phone calls. Yeah. And I'm sure it's true with mailers. They get so many mailers. 
so is you just try to avoid pick niches where you're going to be without that, or is that just part of the business and you're going to be competitive? Now, if you're if you're if you're if you're blanketly calling the probates, I would stop that. I, right. I I don't like to call the ones that have the same address where they're the spouse in the house that passed away, and I rarely ever call the one that's local now. If you have a sister, brother, you have a local, you have a an address within like an hour of that probate house, right. maybe right. two hours. Right. I really, if I if I'm on the, if I pick a day to make phone calls now, and I really don't have to with the letters and the attorney referrals now, and it's a blessing and tell you it's a blessing. But it, I'm going to call the out of state probate. No matter, I'm going to get my probate leads. I don't care if they're probate plus. I don't care if they're pre probate. I don't care if an affidavit list i want i'm going to call the people that are out of state and i'm going to wear them out i'm going to call them until they call me back and i'm going to send them letters a handwritten letter of, of five six seven eight nine letters and it's the list of probably 80 people maybe after you buy three or four or five months of probate leads it's not that many people and right. i guarantee you 20 of those 80 are going to sell and they're right. going to they're going to call you right right so if, Look, if that's where you're at in the business of probate, that's where you need to focus on. Real quick, just some housekeeping, if you uh, permit me. Uh, our guest today is Dave Pinnell. Marine, he's on his website, I think some false advertising, says nice guy. He's not a nice <laughs> guy. <laughs> he's He is a Marine. I learned uh, that. He, it's not that he was a Marine. He is a Marine. When he's a Marine. Bro. What's a Marine? Uh, and uh, the broker I went on a listing appointment yesterday, ended up making the, uh, something we're going to buy. And the guy said, "I only called you because you were a nice guy." So now I'm I'm a little aggressive too. I yeah, he's not. An, I can say for the record, this is on the internet, so it's now true. He's not really a nice guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's a nice guy. Uh, there's a cell phone phone number if you want to get more information with him. Uh, Cities Real Estate is his company in the Fort Worth area. CitiesRealEstate.com, and you can find him there. Um, today we're on Probate Weekly. Um, we do this every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, live, and then. Um, uh, live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you want to register for reminders, put your email address there. Also scroll down if you want to get it in audio format. We're on all the all the different formats. Spotify, I'm in the top 20% of Spotify podcasts. Imagine that. Nice. Uh, or watch on YouTube. Uh, and then uh, Facebook, we can continue the conversation. I have a Facebook group called Probate Weekly. 3,700 members there. A couple things, resources is one, Put your probate content there to get more views and more likes, more engagement. Number two, uh, and I offer this all the time, and very few people take advantage of it, but I'll tell you, one guy who has is Courtney Rollins, and he's just killing it. Link your YouTube there, and then people will see your video, and you get more YouTube views. That's just unnatural. I do that internally with my company as well, but here's a resource I'm offering you guys. Put any probate related. Don't give me your open houses. Don't give me your plain listings. But any probate-related content, love to promote that for you here, as well as referrals. You need an agent out of the area or an attorney out of the area. Put your questions in there, and we'll try to track it down. Separately, I do an email mastermind class. Now, I have a link tree, linktr.ee slash Bill Gross, with all my contact information. If you scroll hey, down Bill, to the master class. Uh -huh. On that note, I went on vacation. I missed most of that course that I paid for. So if you ever do it, can I get back in it? You can get it in for free. Once you've taken it once, you can come back in for free forever. Okay, good. I'm not doing this to make a living. I'm doing it to work. To, the funny You're part is, great. You're amazing. You're in, <laughs> in, you and Bill, uh, uh, Bruce Hill, and uh, it's just y'all taking this by the horns. I love it. You know, I, I the thing is when I coach real estate agents, uh, whether on my team or people call me for help, always the breakdown is they don't have a database and they're not doing anything to connect yeah. with people they've already met. And I just got so sick of coaching the same thing. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it once a month. I'm going to record it. I'll charge for it. If you take it once, you can have it forever. I do a one hour call and then we do four 30 minute follow-ups on each of the four topics so that you can do that. And once you pay for it once, you're welcome to come back anytime you want for free as long as I do the program. So yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's not a money maker for me. I just need to get the time to cover as yeah. well as pay for my assistant in the admin time. So I do that. If you're interested in that, love to have you join that. Um, but that's just not what the whole business is about. So, and, and again, I get asked all the time, why do I do this call? Number one reason I do this is, I get to talk to Dave Pinnell, you know, could I call him and catch him? Eh, he's a busy guy. He calls me back. I'm busy. We're talking. I learn about this business from experts like Dave Pinnell. That's why I do this. Number two, obviously lead generation. People around the country see me and I get referrals. I, 
I got a referral this week from an agent in San Antonio, Texas, as a matter of fact. Uh, we have nice. a listing appointment tomorrow, so hope you get that. So all of you are welcome to network for free. I don't need a referral fee. I'm not charging you. Put your name and contact, your email, your phone number. Let's do some business together and educate. And then if you know somebody that you think would be great for this program, particularly attorneys, national vendors related to probate, or a superstar real estate agent, love to have them on the program as well. Okay, so Dave, how is the business? Obviously, you're more you have more momentum just because you've been in the business longer. You have more past clients. You're stronger in your your knowledge base. But I do believe the business gets tougher every year as well. And so if we don't improve more, then the market gets tougher. We fall behind. If we improve more, we go ahead. What do you see 2024? And what are you doing different this year maybe than you did last year? I'm moving away from the personal representatives. Which I'll still I'll still buy the uh, data and the leads and I'll still put them in my CRM and I'll still do the weekly email if I have an email to them or I'll we'll still send letters to them because it does trickle in good calls. Um, but I want to build I want to use the attorneys as a good like a SOI type. Um, I want to get good referrals and I build good relationships with other professionals that are in the same uh, lead source. Uh, that I'm, you know, y'all could try it in your area, but the same thing that Zillow did to all of us agents, they took our leads on our listings, right? I remember the day when I used to get calls on my listing signs and I'd sell the house and, uh, you know, give it to one of my buyer's agents to be the buyer agent or, you know, assign it, whatever. Now I hardly get any leads that way because all the internet activity. I think it's the same thing doing with the PRs too. We're losing that, but if you could somehow, um, what I'm trying to figure out is how I could be a reference or referral source for other attorneys that I build relationships with. And if I can mirror and match the personality, first of all, get the get a free consult where they call me instead of an attorney if they're trying to look for someone in probate and right. then match it with an attorney that would be helpful in their price range, their budget. Um, they may the not personality need style personality style or budget money wise or language structure. Yeah. Language, Spanish speaking or Mandarin speaking or whatever. So next year, when we do this again, I'll update you guys, but that's, that's, you know, that's the secret sauce I think in this business yeah. and, and also being in the same realm in the world of people, uh, people that are in their six, you know, people that are in their sixties, seventies, like Bill, I'm just sorry. I'm just kidding. I am 65. <laughs> <laughs> I am. That's how it works. I was hoping. I didn't know if you were like 52 or something. I, was like, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I'm just kidding. I know. Um, but you know, if you target that age group and that mindset, you're going to get those deals of mom's and dad's house. Right. So <clears throat> think about think about doing some research on the 55 plus communities and becoming a buyer's agent for those type of buyers. Right. You know. Or the uh, uh, living assistance places and stuff like that. So try to get in between. What I'm saying it's not about pre-probate or buying probate leads or attacking the attorney list on your phone phone day. Uh, just build solid relationships and, and build solid content where they find you. Well, and the flip side for younger people, you know, I started this business in 1986. I was 27. Unlike now, when I am 65 and I fit closer to attorneys in age and yep. similar styles and style and values. If I was 27, I'd be targeting perhaps the children of those elderly people. And because they're stuck doing the heavy lifting of helping mom and dad move or downsize or go to senior care, or they've passed and now the, it falls on their shoulders. In many cases, they never bought or sold a house before. And so if you're the agent that can help your cohort, that's the key, is helping people. And it's easier to help people who are like you. So I, I would say that make sure you find your niche. You know, I have my niche because it works for me. I didn't pick it because it works for anybody else. I yeah. picked it because it works for me. And also, the other thing I would just want to caution everybody is Dave's business is different because Dave works where he works. Mine's different because I work where I work. And I think if you listen to him, what it's not that he's giving you the right strategy. He's giving the right mindset to think about how to build your strategy in your market area. That's the key. It's not his. You're not Dave. You're not yeah. as nice as he is. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you're not in Fort Worth. It's a different market where you are for most of you. So that's the thing is make sure you're right size to where your business is. 
So Dave, like me, you talk to, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of realtors, both in your local market. I know you're, you go on some of the other, you know, networking groups that I see you on from time to time. What do you think the biggest mistake made by real estate agents who are struggling in this business, in this market right now is? Wow. If you just slap somebody and get them out of that mistake, what would you, what oh, would you get them out Oh my gosh. Of? Yeah. Just, just falling. Uh, gosh, buying leads. Shoot. I think people need to build their business and they need to build their content and have people find them instead of them yeah. finding the lead. Uh, yeah. It used to be speed to the lead, right? Now you got automation that does it for you. So it looks like trash online. I think it looks like garbage. If I'm being frank, I think it looks just same with probate. If you're going to buy a probate list and immediately text message somebody. Yeah, fine. You could do that, but you're going to get trash reception, trash responses. Um, on that note, if you want to text message older probates, fine. You may find something uh, diamond in the rough, which we do. But if you're just going to slap something together and not have any content like Bill does, I don't make as much videos as you, Bill, but I do make enough for to drip people and to make uh, and to bring in those type of people finding me. So you just got to build a business where people are going to find you. Right. Well, you find the people who find you, not find somebody else, and everything's yeah. a little, a little people, different. People, you know, to slap you out or whatever. If people think they need to follow these people selling a hundred homes a year, really, you need to sell thirty-six houses in a calendar year to make a really good income as a real estate agent. If you're if you're going off a, a seven thousand uh, dollar commission, so it's it's really easy to get to thirty-six. And if you're targeting the right person and building the right content, half of those are going to be referrals. You know, then the other half of that's going to be your target source, which is me probate. And then the other small seven or eight deals are going to be, you know, things that you actually have in your database where they, where you follow up with somebody and you get the deal. Just to go back a little bit in the questions, Rochelle asked a great question about books uh, Dave, you mentioned you have a number of them. I know for me, I tell anybody who's in California, get the probate code book. It's on Amazon. It's about 30, 40 books, but it has the code. You don't have to read yeah. the real estate section, but it has the actual, it's like the rule book. Uh, if you play football, there's a rule book or baseball is a rule book. Get the rule book on probate. And that way, most attorneys have not read through the code book. Like they, you know, you'll know the rules. It's and it's all written in English, not difficult. What book would you recommend for people, Dave? Uh, one or two books on probate specifically that you've covered that would be helpful, do you think? Oh man, uh, let's see. Medicaid, anything to do with Medicaid? You know, I literally of probate. Here's a good one. This is from you know, paying for long term care, just understanding what they're they're going through in their mindset. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's not probate, but that's like if you get if you're making related. content and videos, you can make content and videos about this topic and you'll bring in the people in that that stage of life. You know, that's what you it, it that's funny when people see you on YouTube as a celebrity and you're talking about what's in their stage of life. Whatever you think that is, whatever wide net you want to cast, that's that's what you got to think about. It's not about, hey, how do you sell a house in under 10 days or uh, what is staging or some stupid topic about selling a house? Nobody cares. They could Google that stuff. Try to do stuff that, you know, people could Google this, but if they see you talking about this, they know that you're knowledgeable about, about it. You know, and for those who are listening, this is gold because when I talk to agents about building a YouTube channel, they always say, well, what do I talk about? I say probate is a, is a mega niche with many minor niches, right? There's the minor niche of, uh, push representatives. There's a minor niche of attorneys. There's a minor niche of senior housing. There's a minor niche of probate advances. There's another niche on Medicaid liens. There's there's numerous minor niches within the big niche that you can focus on create content. But once you pick your area, you can literally do a video. There you go. What's that called? The unexpected sale. You literally could just do the a unexpected sale. unexpected sale. You yeah. literally could do a video on any one of the number of topics in those minor niches. You should have more content. You should be able to talk about it every week for the rest of your career. It's really not that difficult. See, uh, this is the realtor in Seattle, though, Bill. And he wrote a whole probate book and has every single paragraph could be a video. And this Who's one's establishing, 
Um, I got this from the guy that owns Viral Marketing. He's His good. His name is Alex Lar. L E H R. It's Lar. It's an executive ministry for a state. Nice. This, these are the books you want. People, I need to write my own book on how to convert probate, but it's a. Uh, it's every paragraph in here is gold for to making a video about probate. And I still haven't done it, so I need to. A viral marketing, V-Y-R-E-L, is phenomenal. I, I remember when you started his business, I watched his videos, uh, been a customer of his. He's fantastic. They do a great job. Uh, somebody asked about one particular book that I can definitely vouch for that I bought and read, Probate Real Estate Sales 101. In fact, the uh, author uh, is a title rep I've worked with, Kevin Sales, S-A-Y-L-E-S. And I actually bought the book online as I started. I bought everything I could find and then met him. And then I think if you're with Foreclosures Daily by the probate day, they give you a copy of his book for free. I already had the book, so I gave it to somebody else. But I got him to sign it. So, uh, But that's, that's, that's a cool. good one. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, okay, so let's – It just comes down uh, to the knowledge. It, I, it, if you're a reader, you know mm -hmm. that your language changes in the period that you're reading that book. Definitely. So if you're watching videos, your 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 vision and your goals and your you're gonna for a period of time of watching that video and for about three hours after you're gonna think about that video. Same with reading a book. The, a book, not an audio. A book takes maybe a week to read. So you're thinking about it all week long. Just make some videos while you're reading the book. Just cut it right there into pieces and just really you, yeah. you just can give over what you learned. You learn one thing, record that as a video. You can do shorts, you can do three, four, or five minute pieces, uh, hundred percent. Literally today like I was talking to a, <laughs> today I was talking to a banker who specializes in working with trusts and estates, and he referred to somebody as the dead guy. And I said, I think you should use the word decedent. Because when yeah. you read books, they use the right language and the right language becomes natural. When you talk to the customer, you don't want to say your dead mother or the dead guy. You want to say the decedent is a it, – it's it's a polite way. It's a respectful term that works. It also shows you you know the language. When you talk to attorneys, when you use, use the right terms, uh, terms they are going to be respectful of you rather than thinking you're an idiot. Yep. Um, okay, so let's see here. Matthew says, $7,000 commission, never had one. You know, can I say, Matthew, my average commission is probably about 12000 um, so it's different by markets. Again, uh, different numbers, different market numbers, and yeah. um, uh, and just do what's appropriate for your market area. He set some goals that work for him, and you should set goals that work for you. Um, I make that. That's um, off about a. That's off of like a two fifty sale. So that was our average price range in forward. Now it's about three eighty for an average price. So. Now the average commission check is ten thousand dollars for us. There you go. That just goes to our market. If it's less than where you're at, you know that's fine. Your your cost of living is going to be a lot less. Uh, and Shamanak asks, "What book was it? It was Real Estate Sales." Let me bring it up one last time. Oh, I close it. Real Estate Sales One Hundred and One. If you look into Amazon, I'll uh, oh, say Probate Sales One Hundred and One. Uh, and and what's funny is it's. Um, uh, by a uh, author, sales, but he spells his last name S A Y L E S on Amazon. Yeah. Probate Real Estate Sales 101 by Kevin Sales. Great book. I read it. Like I said, I bought it before I met him. Uh, there's uh, 4.5 ratings, 140, uh, 4.5 rated. So definitely saw it. Okay. So um, last question. We have about five minutes left here. I think I'm up to date on the. On the uh, chat box. You can go box. a longer if you want, Bill. It's fine. Well, I also don't want people listening to get burnt out on this. So I want to keep them coming back for more. Thank you, though. Okay. Um, right. You know, I've talked to you, you know, we've done two or three episodes of this together, maybe three or four. I talk to you regularly, you know, irregularly, but once in a while on other formats. You always seem engaged, focused, moving forward. What is it that keeps you and your mindset focused, forward, productive? I don't know that I've ever seen you jumping for joy or screaming out loud or laughing out loud, but I've always seen you in a productive, forward moving. You always have plans you've launched. You're always in process. How is it you keep your mindset in that direction? Man, you just come from a broke childhood, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just come from a, um, you know, I'm proud of where I've come and I'm proud of the lifestyle that this has created. I'm proud of the knowledge that I've got on a daily basis. I'm, I get to, you know, I tell Liz every day, we're, we're so grateful to actually, we used to have an office and go to work every day, but now having the kids, it's nice 
I mean, we spent two hours in the morning getting the kids out to school. And then I, uh, any day I could randomly get a good call from a pro bill, someone selling a house, uh, either for a listing appointment or, uh, or, or wholesale, you know, you got to be as a, as a realtor in this business, as a broker in Fort Worth, I am open to helping anybody I can. And, and some of that help is not me forcing a listing or, or marking their houses where online or whatever and, and taking that listing agreement with me to the appointment. Sometimes they just need some advice. Sometimes they want to sell me the house, you know, but I'm going to do is do my job and help them. I kind of ran them up there, but yeah, that, that keeps me in. So yeah, I'm definitely focused. I'm, I, I think about this stuff hundred percent every day. And, and my wife has to, has to snap me out of it all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's well, a, I will say, I do think that um, if you can make your business, your hobby, right? So for me personally, I, I launched a YouTube channel. I've made a hobby, how to do a better job. I've really worked at trying to make this better. I'm not a full-time YouTuber, so I can't do it all day long. But I work at trying to make this better, you know, every week. And same with, uh, you know, other techniques using the sky slope, the forms, how to be better at, you know, communicating with my customer more efficiently, more effectively, quicker, easier for them. Um, if you if you make that your hobby, uh, then the business becomes more fun because it's something you enjoy doing. And uh, I think that that's part of it. You have to find a piece of this business. And I think you started earlier on on this th uh, thought, David. You got to find a part of this business that you love to do. And then you'll do it because if it's a if it's a grind, I'm not. I've called four hours a day. I'm not going to do it anymore. I've door knocked. I'm not going to do that anymore at this stage of my life. I don't have to. I would be more productive than that. But to get started and to come up, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. So, um, hey, David, as always, I always learn so much from you. Thank you so much for being on the call today. Thanks for Welcome. sharing your information. Uh, and again, if you want to get more information from David, you can go to citiesrealestate.com. C i t i e s realestate.com. If you go to the, uh, under the about part, there's this good looking, handsome guy and his name, his name and Marine and some false advertising it says nice guy and <laughs> short in there. There's his contact info, his cell, his office, his social media and all that good stuff. So David, thank you so much for being on the call today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. If anybody has a referral for Fort Worth, let me know or Dallas Fort oh. Worth area. The Metro DFW area. Very good. Thank you so much. And for the rest of you, this is Probate Weekly. We do this every single week, Thursday, 4 p.m. Um, ProbateWeekly.com. If you want to sign up to get reminders, put your email in at ProbateWeekly.com. We'll bring you to this page. Also, we have the audio versions and on YouTube channel. If you want to sign up for more there. Facebook group to continue the conversation, go to the Facebook group, ProbateWeekly.com. We have 3,700 members and growing. Post your you, your probate-related content there to get more views. That's free. Also, look for referrals for agents and attorneys around the country. If you want more of me, I'm on Linktree slash Bill Gross, linktr.e slash Bill Gross. And I have an email mastermind program. You can just scroll down here and click on it, and it will take you right there somewhere on there. I'm missing it. There you go, Real Estate Masterclass. And all my social media stuff you can connect to as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for being on the call today. Appreciate those of you who submitted uh, questions in the chat box. If you have a question, feel free to reach out, call me, text me, email me. Uh, I do my best to return all the calls and make time for you guys. I'd love to help you. I appreciate your support. Again, thank you. You made me the number one probate YouTube channel in the last uh, 30 days, the last 90 days. Uh, and actually more than the next two combined. So thank you for support. I really appreciate you. As always, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.